Hello everyone, tonight I want to talk about a topic that one of my subscribers brought up and that is how should a beginner approach a problem on ML or specifically for DeepRacer. He asked for videos on common problems that come in a way for a beginner like he. So let's go into that. So today I want to cover some basics that I think everyone that does DeepRacer should know about. So let's go over some introductory stuff and then I promise I get into the, the interesting things. So there are three types of machine learning. Unsupervised learning, supervised and reinforcement learning. And reinforcement learning is what DeepRacer is all about. DeepRacer uses reinforcement learning to learn to drive or to for the car to basically teach itself how to drive. So how does that work? Well, imagine you're a little kid, right? And a little kid might get punished or rewarded depending on what they do, right? So that's basically what we do to the to um, in this algorithm, right? So when something valuable, desirable is done, we give this person a positive reward. And in the case of DeepRacer, the reward function would give a positive reward when it drives in a correct way, at least what we think is correct. Now, when they go, they do something silly or bad, kids get punished. Uh, similarly, we can quote unquote punish the car for driving off the track, for crashing, et cetera, et cetera. So essentially what the algorithm does is it observes an, an, the environment. The environment is a deep racer track itself. When it's driving around the track, it takes a snapshot of the camera image. That's the observation. It's fed to the agent that has a policy. The policy decides what the next action should be. It takes an action. So let's say you're driving down the track you decide to make a sharp left turn. That's going to go back to the environment. And if you make a sharp left turn going down the straightaway, you're going to go off track and uh, the reward will be a negative one, right? Because you basically are going to crash. And that information is sent, saved back into the reinforcement learning algorithm so that it can adapt uh, during and learn from, from its mistakes as well as its correct actions. So we need to define the reward function for DeepRacer. That's the whole point of the competition. That magical function that's going to teach the car how to drive. So I want to talk about reward function shapes and I have other videos about this. But again, I wanted to go back to basics and really cover some fundamental topics that sometimes I think I, I realize some people just don't get and I want to make sure people understand. So let's go through some terminology. The domain of a function is a set of all possible inputs, right? What does that mean? That's the stuff that you're feeding into the function. And the range of a function is a set of all possible outputs. So let's take a look at this example from Student League. Suppose you have a re reward function that simply returns a speed, right? So it doesn't think about angles or anything, just returns the speed. The reward function is the speed. Well, we know that from Student League, the domain is 0 0.5 to 1. Why is that? Because the range of speed in the action space is half a meter per second to one meter a second. So that's the input. If you're using speed as the input to the function, that's the domain, right? That's that's the, the real range of values. The output range of the function is 0 0.5 to one because we're just returning speed, right? It's very straightforward example here. If I were to plot this, this area here is essentially the range of values we're gonna see, right? So the input X, it's going to be speed 0 0.5 to 1. And since we're just returning the value itself, the output is going to be 0 0.5 to 1. Right? Very simple. Now I have a question. What if we change the function to 20x minus 10? The input is still going to be 0 0.5 to 1. But look at the output. Now we've transformed this from 0 to 10. Now, in Student League, this is super important because the car needs to drive at full speed the entire time, right? 
So it's really critical to think about this reward function shape and make sure that you are giving a high reward for fast speed. It's simple, right? Again, I just want to go over the basics so that I feel like too many people misunderstand this this basic uh, this basic stuff. All right, but that's simple enough. But what if we want to combine two reward function components, right? So let's say you have a function for speed where you want to reward fast speed, but you also want to reward heading or following the center line or some other component, right? So you have two things you want to reward. How do you combine these? So this is a question that often comes up and I wanted to just show this interaction, right? So here what I have is a two by two. So suppose you have a, a function for sp that uses speed as an input and the range is going to be zero to 10. Zero to 10 is the output of the function. You also have a re reward uh, sub function for heading where heading is the input. So is the car pointed in the right direction? And the output of your reward sub function is uh, a value between zero and 10, right? How do you combine these? Well, if you just sum speed plus heading, this is what's going to look like, right? So when the speed and heading are both perfect at 10, you get the output value of 20. And if they're both bad, so low speed and bad heading, you get zero. So now the range will be zero to 20, right? So at every step, the, the possible values of the reward function will be zero to 20. And the total reward for that episode would be the sum of all the re all of the rewards for every step. All right. So, but here's what I wanted to show you: at the fiftieth percentile, right? The fiftieth percentile of the range of this combined function is ten, right? So, if the maximum is twenty and the minimum is zero, the the, the I guess the fiftieth percentile value is ten, and I've highlighted it here. What does this mean? This means that if you have perfect heading, but very slow speed, the output of your reward function would be 10. Guess what? That's the same as if you had 10 speed, so the fastest speed possible, but completely wrong direction. Do you see the problem here? You're, you're re we are rewarding both of these scenarios equally, right? So I think this could become a problem right you need to keep an eye on it right so yes in the perfect scenario we have your perfect heading and your perfect speed yes you get to get the maximum value of 20 but keep in mind that there's this this um 50th percentile where all of these values will basically get the same reward function right so you might be wondering well, why doesn't it go faster given the, how i'm combining these functions well because it's the same value right like the for the algorithm I could be going maximum speed in the wrong direction or in the perfect direction and at the slowest speed and the algorithm is going to treat it the same. So anyway, something to keep in mind. So how about we multiply these two? Sometimes you see online people multiplying these products, uh, these com reward components together. Well, now your range will be from zero to 100. So now your reward values are much higher, right? And now this 50 percentile has this this curve to it, right? So it's kind of interesting. You might want to think about, okay, this is what I want. Is it not what I want? So uh, it's important to understand how these shapes, how these reward functions uh, kind of differ in shape depending on the treatment you give it. Something I was curious about uh, was taking the harmonic mean. So if you do a lot of machine learning, you'll learn about the F the F score, which is the harmonic mean between recall and precision. So here we're taking the harmonic mean between speed and heading, right? And if you use Excel or Google, uh, Google sheets, uh, there's a function called harm mean that will calculate this for you automatically, or you can just look it up in Wikipedia and type in the formula and write the formula out yourself. So what's the benefit of this? Well, it takes the, it's a way to create, take the average of ratios. And in this case, notice that the output range of this function is from zero to 10, right? So this helps control the, the max values essentially of combining these things, but yet we still get this 
this curve property at the 50th percentile like we saw when we took the product. Okay, this might be something you want to do, maybe not. I thought it was pretty interesting. I had some luck with this when I was uh, experimenting. But again, the if you're going at um, low speed, perfect heading, you're going to get a 50th percentile reading of 3. Uh, I don't know why it came up. With, anyway, the curve is coming up at this point. Uh, I think this is based on percentile. I should double check. But anyway, you see the, the general shape, right? It's, it's similar uh, to the multiplication one. So let's do something different. Let's do a polynomial. Sometimes you see these in these example um, you know, examples online or in Medium articles, people start taking polynomials. So here I took heading squared plus half of speed squared. And I get this different, this different shape. Again, look at the range from zero to 150. And now this 50th percentile or highlighting that I did gives a different shape than the other ones, right? So again, the value roughly around a 50, like if I have bat low speed, but 70% heading, it's similar as if I was going full speed in the completely wrong direction, the heading of practically zero, right? So again, you want to think about, is this what I want or not? So what's my main takeaway? It's like, it's important to think about the domain and range of your, your reward sub functions and what the range will be when you add or multiply or combine them in some way, right? So as you start creating these uh, reward functions and taking ideas that you see from online or use ideas that you have on your own and you start combining them really think about what that output range would be it might surprise you uh you definitely look at the logs look at the reward values for each step in an iteration or an episode again the data may surprise you all right that's all i wanted to share with you guys tonight uh please like and subscribe Leave a comment below if you found this helpful. And if there are other topics you want me to talk about, please uh, leave, uh, leave a comment. There you have it, folks. Team Boltron. Stay tuned for more. Make sure to subscribe and click that like button if you want to see more of this content.